Welcome to Lab 7 for Physics 185. This lab will look at the motion of objects in the sky, particularly looking at the motion of the moon. You notice when you go out at night, things move around in the sky, and that's of course due to the Earth's rotation. And if nothing moved separately from just the Earth, if, if none other, there was no other motion other than that due to the fact that the Earth is rotating, it would be really easy to track the motion of objects in the sky. But we know that objects also have motion other than due to that um, caused by the Earth's rotation or perceived by the Earth's rotation. And that is, in addition to the Earth rotating on the axis, um, the moon also follows an orbit around the Earth. And so the apparent motion of the moon will be through the star stars over the course of a particular time interval. And so our goal in this particular lab is to determine the rotational motion of the planet on which you happen to be located and to determine the orbital motion of the moon on that particular planet along with making or drawing some conclusions about the overall motion of the moon on that particular planet. Um, the, the important information that you're going to need to make this particular calculation is when you're finding the orbital period of the moon with respect to the Earth, you're going to look at it in terms of how long it takes the planet to actually move around its axis, its rotational period. And then this particular period, this T sub m, is the rotational period of the moon by looking at how long it takes it to move through the stars. And once we open up the lab and we see the different motions that we'll be looking at, I think this particular number will make a little bit more sense to you. Let's go ahead and open up the lab and look at what you might see as you look at this lab. Okay, so you will get a field of view of the sky. Make sure you turn on grid. And the moon is identified here as this big round circle. The first thing you're going to need to do with this lab is determine the length of your planet's rotational period with respect to the stars. Right? And obviously you want to use the stars to determine this rotational period, not the moon, because we're trying to find the sidereal day, how long it takes the Earth to go once around on its axis. What you need to do, notice there is a clock here down at the bottom. What you need to do is identify some easel, easily recognizable pattern of constellations. So I'm going to look for these two stars here, sort of form maybe an elongated Z, and wait for that pattern of stars to get back to this middle grid line. Okay. And starting at time zero, so I'm just going to note the time here on the clock is zero, and then I'm going to begin the animation. I'll start it and I'll make sure it's running fast and we'll just go ahead and let this animation run for a little bit of time. Um, we're tracking the stars moving across the sky. Um, the clock is running. And now I'm going to start looking for that, again, unique pattern of, of constellations in the sky. I'll get a sense that, that co those constellations are coming soon when the moon begins to appear on the left-hand side of the screen. And it's always a little interesting trying to do this while we're waiting and waiting for this pattern of stars to begin to appear again. I'm going to slow this down. And notice here is about the pattern of stars that I was looking for, this sort of elongated Z. And so I'm going to stop the animation when I think that Z is about back to the point where it had originally started. The time reading here on my clock now tells me the length of the sidereal day on this planet. So this is the important information you want to write down. Notice the moon is no longer aligned with these particular constellations. Over the course of this day, the moon has moved backward with respect to the motion of those stars. So that's step one. That gives us the length of the day. And I'm just going to pop up the check your answers window so you see the things that we are going to find. Okay. So the check your answers, it's asking for the rotational period of the planet. Um, it's asking for it in hours. And so what I'm going to do is a quick calculation. 
Um, 54 minutes is roughly 9 tenths of an hour, so I'm going to enter this in as 21.9 hours, and we'll just see if it checks. And it does. So I found the correct period for the day. Okay. Now we need to figure out how the moon moves with respect to the stars. And to do that, we need to go back to this field of view. Um, make sure you restart your animation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my field of view to greatly reduce the view of the sky. Okay, so now what I've done is I've really zoomed in on the moon and I have these stars visible and I have a 10 degree field of view of the sky. I want to show the grid. And what I'm going to do is to figure out how fast the moon is moving with respect to the stars, I'm actually going to lock my telescope on the moon and then watch the stars move by. The suggestion I would make is you pick the farthest star to the left on this particular screen. That would be this star right here. To get to this right side, it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, about 6.4 squares. So this star is going to move 6.4 degrees from its starting point here till it reaches the right side of the screen. You can begin the animation. Note the time on the clock is once again zero. And as you begin the animation, you will notice that the stars are now moving across your field of view. When that star approaches the leftmost side, I'll just stop the animation now. When the star approaches the leftmost side, you'll note the time, and that will give you the time it took that star for this particular case to travel 6.4 degrees. On the check your answers box, notice what it's looking for. It wants how fast do the stars move across the sky in degrees per hour. So we noticed that it took 21.9 hours to go one full revolution. To get degrees per hour, I would take 360 degrees, divide by 21.9, and that would give me degrees per hour for our planet. If I wanted to find out how fast the moon moves relative to the stars, I would take those 6.4 degrees and divide by um, the number of hours that it took that particular star to travel those 6.4 degrees. And that would give me the rate at which the moon moves with respect to the stars. If I want to find the actual period for the moon that goes into this particular calculation right here, what I do is I take 360 degrees and I divide by that rate I just found. This will be a fairly long value. Okay. Um, the first time I did this lab I got something like about a thousand hours. And this is the rate that goes in here to get the actual orbital period of the moon. You would take the period of the Earth divided by one minus the period of the Earth divided by this value you get by this particular calculation. The next questions that are on there then is the sidereal orbital period of the moon, right? So you need to find that in days. So you look at how many hours did it take to go once around with respect to the star and divide by your rotational period. Sometimes this is a little bit quirky if you can't get it to check by using your rotational period, sometimes they expect the, the actual hours to be the hours that we would have on our Earth, so their conversion factor is tw sometimes 24 hours per day. How many minutes in excess of each day does it take to move to get back to the same point in the sky? That just looks at finding the difference between the two orbital periods. The orbit of um, the uh, orbital period of the moon in hours, the orbital period of the Earth, you find the difference between those and that will give you the time in minutes. And then how much earlier does the moon rise each day? We'll just take the ratio of minutes, convert that to hours, and the ratio of those hours divided by 24 is the same ratio of how many degrees it will have moved earlier to 360 degrees. That's just a simple ratio. 
Um, the one issue you may have trouble getting to check on here is the orbital period in days. Um, if you have any other questions, please email me. Good luck with the lab.